You gonna join me, Bill? You're such a cute puppy. You're such a cute puppy. You're such a cute puppy, Bill. Billy, 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 Billy. <sighs> who owns who, really? Oh, Bill, your eyes. Can I wipe your eyes? They're so dirty. Don't move. Don't move. Yucky. Herc. Okay, what's the position today, Bill? <laughs> I'm not giving you a belly rub, bro. Hi, guys. Oh, are you comfy? Sure, I'll just hold your head, no problem. Hi, guys. We're back, and I am joined today with my trusty Pug Pudge. Hopefully, he stays with me for the duration of this video, but lately, he's been... No, he hasn't really been wanting to film with me. Um, usually his preference is to kind of just sit somewhere around me, but uh, like after five, 10 minutes, he just gives up and he just goes away. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to, I'm gonna manifest this from the beginning. Today is gonna be a 35 minute and under video. 35 minutes and under. It's so hard. I don't know how YouTubers make like 10, 20 minute videos. like yet still like make a thorough video and get everything they need to do and say across. I don't know. I don't know. To me, a short video is like 40, 40, 45 minutes long. So I'm going to aim for 30 and I think today is going to be the perfect video to do a short video. So in today's video, I'm going to be featuring the eight, 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 that's five. Eight out of 10 plants that I showed in my October favorites from 2021. And I'm just gonna give you guys an update on how they're doing, what they look like now, kind of give you any backstory of like what's happened since then. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, and some of them are invisible because they are not with me anymore. And um, yeah, we'll just kind of go through it somewhat quickly and then we're gonna call it a day and I'm gonna let you go about your life. So yeah, let's just get started. I'm gonna go in the order that I did it in the video in October. I'm gonna have to, kind of similar to my July favorites update, I'm going to have to look at my phone, kind of refresh my memory on what the plant looked like and then I will show you what it looks like now. So Pudge Babe, um, as much as I love, he's like, nope, I'm not moving. What if I put you in a headlock? What if I put you in a headlock? I gotta put you down. You gotta go over here now. I know, I'm so mean, I'm so mean. Okay, so the first plant that I featured in my video was, I believe it was the biggest, biggest, what? What? It was the big Gloriosum that I imported from Tropicals plants or Equidona, I can't remember. You guys know the big the big gloriosum. Alright, so we're going oh my gosh, it's so weird to watch headless videos. Alright, so in in October it was Are you good? Okay, so in October it was a four leafer. Pretty decent size already. I had already gotten I don't know if that leaf is still on this is that leaf yeah i already had a decent sized leaf on that plant or decent sized leaves on that plant but definitely not as big as it is now um in that video i would have had it for gosh a few months but not too long i'm looking at the way the leaves look and they look they look good, actually. It was bouncing around. It was in my EXO, and then it was in my tent, and then it was just like in my plant room, and then it moved to my Rudsta. So it was always kind of in like some kind of greenhouse until it started getting so large that I just could not house it in a greenhouse anymore. So I had, I had no choice. I had to take it out. Um, I don't know if everyone has this experience. I know that my friend Jing has that experience, but when I try gl gloring, <laughs> when I try or when I grow gloriosums out in just ambient humidity outside of a controlled gr greenhouse, it pushes out so much EFN. I don't know what it is. Like all my gloriosums on my shelf back there, and it's been like this since day one, they always push out EFN, which is why I have to give them showers so often because the EFN burns through the leaves and creates these like 
little yellow marks on the leaf blade. So um, in October, it did not look like the plant was pushing out any EFN because I would have still had it in a greenhouse. But now it's um, it's been living in my living room for, I wanna say like three months now. What's, yeah, maybe three months. So let me just bring it out. No, no, no. Okay, so here is big Mama Gloriosa now. You can see like, it's definitely, it doesn't look amazing. And I'm gonna show you guys the backs of them and exactly how much EFN is pushing out of this thing. It's wild. Um, I believe this leaf was on it and this leaf was on it when um, I filmed my October favorites. This is the newest leaf to emerge. This one just unfurled like two days ago and it's still kind of crunchy and uh, fully expanding, but it's so cute. It's so cute and round. It's got the overlapping lobes, but you guys look at the back of this plant and I just, keep in mind, I just washed this down like three days ago. Do you see how much like EFN is on this petiole and just like all over the leaf? It's everywhere. I honestly can't tell if it's picking it up in the camera, but you can kind of see these like crystal looking sap things. It is all over this plant, everywhere. I think it's most visible in this light. Can you guys see? Like it's all over. And then it leaves like, oh my gosh, my arms are burning. Uh, which leaf is it? Oh, it leaves these like insane marks on the back. This plant is like 360. Like that, it's, I'm shaking, I can't. I'm, I have no upper body strength. <sighs> so it leaves like these marks all on the back. And I am constantly, constantly washing this plant down. Oh my gosh. This one is my baby. I baby her more than so many of the plants in my collection. It is not the easiest plan. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna take some photos of this and then I'll just insert them to kind of give you guys a better look at the markings I'm talking about. So yeah, I because this one did have spider mites when I had my full spider mite outbreak, um, I was like almost certain this one was going to get spider mites. I was not thinking it was gonna be unscathed. But uh, I, you know, th this is one of the plants that I'm just constantly like, okay, every single week without fail, I'm gonna give it a shower because of the excess of EFN on it. Um, I just, it's really just kind of plagued this plant so much. If you're wondering what this mark is right here, I tried to move this into the bedroom and then I squished it up against the wall and this leaf just completely bent like this against the wall. And then, and then that happened. Hello? I thought it was a scammer. I was gonna let you guys listen. Love messing with them. So uh, yeah, this was just like pushed up against the wall and it was just all kinds of bad, but I've had to move this thing around so much because at one point it was blocking the TV and then it was too close to a window and I just, I, I don't know. We've just been, we've been struggling a little bit. But besides EFN, honestly, this plant is, it's so great. And look at how massive the chonk is getting. Like, look how thick she is, oh my gosh. Compared to back here, where it's like so much skinnier, like all of this new, new growth is just so massive. And <laughs> you can see it's busting out of this pot. I already had to cut it open just to get this one out. So this one, I will, probably be repotting after my trip to California. It's not really a priority to me right now. Um, I've had Gloriosum sort of bust out of the pot before and they were just totally fine for a while. But yeah, um, to prevent the petioles from like kind of getting scraped on the side of this pot and from having the leaves kind of revert in size, I do want to get it repotted somewhat soon. But yeah, I mean, it's grown it's grown pretty significantly since I showed you guys this plant back back in October. I mean, I've shown you guys this plant way more times since then, but um, this, this one hasn't really stopped growing since I got it. Like, it's never once been like dormant or just 
had like no growth. It's always pushing out something. I think this is the second pot that it's had since I've had it. But um, yeah, besides that, nothing, nothing too crazy. This one is in drainage holes. And I have this one right up against my east facing window right in front of me. I am fertilizing this one pretty regularly. And besides the sort of occasional spider mite thing and the EFN thing, as I mentioned, this one is just amazing. Like I just, I'm in love with it. I don't, I don't know exactly what form of gloriosum this is. It's either z this like zebra gloriosum that's been kind of going around or white veins. I think my husband's on a call. Okay, so I am just about ready to put this down because I'm actually getting EFN all over me. But uh, I guess long story short, she's alive, she's kicking, she's fine, but she's just got so much like cosmetic damage from having spider mites and then from just having all of this EFN all over the plant all the time. Even after I shower it, it's EFN free for like two days max and then it kind of starts all over again. But uh, in terms of the largest leaf, this one has been the largest one so far. And it's, I think that I featured this one in like a new leaf video or I featured it in something recently when it was kind of brand new. But yeah, it's like way bigger than my head. And then the leaf that came after it was this one, the one that I kind of messed up against the wall. Not as big. Uh, this was, I think, the first one that I grew out in the living room. This one was grown in the greenhouse, which is why I had to take it out because it was so large. And then this one looks like it's probably gonna be about the same size as this one. But I'm just happy to have growth regardless. And now I'm gonna put this down because it is sticky everywhere. The next one is my... Uh, Thalmatophyllum xanadu. Actually doesn't really look that much different. It's been repotted since then, I could see that. Uh, it still has some of the leaves that were in that video. And it was a little bit smaller, but honestly there's not too much of a difference. Here's what it looks like now. As you would have seen in that short footage that I just showed, it was in a, oh I'm so itchy. It was in a six inch pot or five or six inch pot. I then moved it into this glass pot because it was getting a little bit too big and I wanted to display it in my kitchen and it just looked kind of weird in the plastic pot. I wanted to get it into something nicer, but I think I can't really pinpoint a timeline for all of this happening, but this one did have thrips. It had adult thrips and the larvae and I, Gosh, I think maybe I'm kind of getting like a memory back of that being one of the reasons why I wanted to repot it because I wanted to get just whatever was in that soil out and um, just kind of wanted to start over. So this one is one that does get regular showers as well. This one is living in my bedroom now. I just want it to be a little bit closer to the shower. <laughs> I've put um, a new plant in my kitchen and this one is actually doing really, really well in the bedroom. You can see that it's not like a world's larger than it was when I showed it back in October, but it definitely has way more leaves. Uh, the leaves have not really sized up that much, to be honest. It's still quite small, and even the new ones that are coming in are not that big, but I'm just happy that they're sort of all kind of taking the Xanadu shape and we're out of this like juvenile stage from when I first acquired it. I think um, these, oh, this one's sticky too. These are one of the original leaves on it. These are one of the original leaves on it. And without watching the footage right now, I can't remember if I've talked about the spots and the burns that happen on this plant. A lot of people experience that with this plant. They experience it with the jungle boogie. And in my experience, it's just been from EFN. When I don't give this one regular washdowns, it is very, it becomes very sticky, like the gloriosum. And you can kind of see where it's like sort of burned through some of those leaves, those ye little yellow spots. Uh, not all of them have it because it really just depends on how good I am at washing. But I'm just not, I don't know, I, I don't really enjoy having to bring plants to the shower all the time. I just find it kind of a chore, but 
you know, you kind of do what you have to do. I, I feel like right now I'm just sort of learning to live with the spots, but this is so much better than any other Xanadu I've had in the past where I kind of just like let the EFN sit on the plant and just kind of whatever. I've tried a little bit, a little bit harder <laughs> with this one, but I could probably be washing this down as much as I do my Gloriosum because the EFN is not as heavy on this plant as it is on the Gloriosum and it's much easier to shower. It's just, it's in a no drainage vessel so I don't really like just sticking this in the shower and doing a spray because then I have to cover this so that this doesn't get flooded with water. But I give this maybe another hmm, four months, maybe four months until I probably have to move it again or chop it down which i really don't want to do because i am trying to get those nice big mature leaves on it mature xanadu leaves are just so so beautiful they get really really dark um the venation becomes a little bit more if i can remember it becomes a little bit more of like a yellowy green and it's just way more defined than what this looks right now i mean you can kind of see how this is much more defined than like this where it's kind of just like washed out but as it matures it gets even more defined and prominent and it's just ugh, they're so pretty so yeah this is the xanadu not doing not doing too bad uh no i have not seen pests on this not even spider mites in some time so i think the systemic did its job i think the repetitive showers did its job but yeah, this is, this is a plant that I really just kind of like having around, so not much else to say. Next plant, oh, it's the Scalprum. So I can't remember when I would have acquired this, but it's, it has one, two, three, four, five. It's got five leaves with a sixth one coming in. It was in a four inch orchid pot and the leaves looked like it was kind of just slightly larger than my my hand so this wouldn't have been much longer after i acquired it just based on like how many of those original leaves are still on the plant um oh so i just compared it to my forearm so the leaf is about the size of yeah my entire forearm forearm the largest leaf on it anyway so let me show you what it looks like now one of my absolute pride and joys since october i have repotted it. it is no longer in an orchid pot it is in a no drainage vessel and it's kind of been in a no drainage vessel for a while if you guys watched some of my older videos you would have seen me do a pretty aggressive repot on this it was really root bound and it had so many corms and i harvested about 11 of them this one since then has uh had a ton of spider mites it was absolutely attacked by my little infestation not my little infestation my so somewhat large infestation um so it had spider mites it never got thrips this one pushed out three inflows in a row and i have not had a new leaf on this thing for forever and it finally pushed out this one for me it only fully unfurled maybe a week ago and if we're looking at the size of it i think that so this one, I think this one would have been in the October video, maybe. I can't remember if this one was it, but um, I'm trying to show you scale here. Let's get my guns out. So it's, yeah, it's a pretty decent size. It's definitely larger than the one that I would have shown in the October favorites. And I feel like this could actually be the largest leaf that I've ever had on it. Oh, that's heavy. I'm not gonna go too much into the care. I feel like I tend to do that all the time. I tell you guys like exactly what I do for it when I say it a million times. So I did talk about the care for this in my two hour long alocasia care video or whatever. Um, but I do have this one in my Mills bow right now. It's getting lots of warmth, um, not a ton of humidity, but it's definitely warm in there. But yeah, I'm just so happy that we're out of this freaking inflow phase because I thought that it was just going to keep giving me inflow after inflow after inflow and when it pushed out those three it was two inflows in a row and then it pushed out one more but when the two inflows came out like three of the leaves died it just kept sucking the energy from it and it was it was emerging from this little 
area so slowly that I, I couldn't even reach in to like pluck it off because I didn't want it taking any more of the nutrients from the plant. So yeah, as soon as it got far enough that I could just like just cut it off, I definitely did that and you can still see some of the stems in there but hopefully it is smooth sailing and just more leaves because I really would not know what to do with alocasia inflows. I don't really have any interest really in doing anything with them. I just love this plant so much. I just want leaves on this plant. That's all I want. I do, I do still have a good amount of corms growing and the little babies are about this big now. So uh, yeah, she's doing well, she's doing okay. Uh, probably could use a repot like I said, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, I find that alocasias actually do really well when they're root bound, especially if it's in no drainage. I've had a lot of people tag me on Instagram and even just on YouTube saying that they've gotten a scalp rim after watching some of my videos. And I have not had one person tell me that it was not like, it did not live up to the hype or it did not meet their expectations. This, if I could recommend any alocasia to anyone, um, I know that you guys know how much I love my alocasia fry deck, but this one is my number one um, alocasia, hands down. It's my favorite one. It's one of my easiest ones. And if you just, if you're still trying to break into the alocasia world and you've been kind of afraid of their care or just haven't done well with them historically, Seriously, get a scalp rum. I don't know what it is about this plant, but I just really feel like I can't take credit for this because it just has the will to live and it's a very, very easy plant. And I don't know how it's, I mean, looking at the viewfinder right now, like the leaf is actually, it looks darker in person. It looks lighter in the viewfinder, but you just really cannot deny how freaking beautiful these leaves are. They're amazing. So yeah, anyway, scalp rum's doing good. Ah, freaking ads. Oh, it was so small. Okay, so back in October, this one was a five leafer inside of a, what is that? A restaurant to go cup in moss. The leaves were pretty decent size, nothing that's really out of the ordinary. It looks pretty similar to what it looks like now in terms of the leaf size. But yeah, it looks like this was just kind of when I got it going again after it rotted and I propagated it. So yeah, that's what it looked like then. I keep forgetting to scoot over so that I can insert the clip, but whatever, I'll figure it out. So here is what it looks like now. So, okay, here's where we're at. I did move it out of the moss situation. It is in Party Pond right now. Uh, in a no drainage vessel, I got a lazy pole on it and you can see how well it's taken to it. I think I only got it onto a pole after these two came out because I was like, oh my gosh, it is getting so tiny. So yeah, put it on a pole and then it pushed out this one here and then it pushed out this one, which is pretty decent size. Then it pushed out this one, this cutie leaf right here. <laughs> and it pushed out a really teeny tiny leaf because I freaking forgot to add more moss. So, I don't know, nothing really special to report about this plant besides the fact that I have tried to at least care for it a little bit better. And I, yeah, I'm just kind of hoping to get some of these nice big leaves back. I feel like it just varies, honestly. Like, the second that it runs out of pole, sometimes it'll push out a nice big leaf. Sometimes it'll push out a little tiny one like this. But you can kind of see how drastic the difference is. Like, to go from this leaf right here, like, to this one, and then immediately to this one. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's really just... A hit or miss I guess but I feel like I don't quite understand this plant as much as I do my other plants I just know that they are so much easier than the Raphidophora uh, tetrasperma I know that uh, these leaves like have the ability to get really really large fast like even on my propagations that I've cut from this plant um, I've had like a small leaf come from the stem like this and then immediately had like a large one like this out of nowhere and just sitting in moss or something so in that sense i don't really understand it in terms of like why sometimes it just has a massive growth size with almost no effort and then why i can actually i can have one that's 
in an XO on a pole and then go from this leaf size down to this leaf size. So if you guys want um, Pertusa care advice, you're, you're on the wrong channel. Uh, this is not a plant that I feel confident with. It's not a plant that I would really ever be like, this is the care for it to like, you know, grow it successfully. I'm not the one, obviously. But you know, she's not doing bad, she's alive. That's, that's good news. And I do have two other propagations from this plant that I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with. I think I might take it to California, but yeah. This is her, doing okay. She's getting tall. Probably after another two or three leaves, I'm going to have to either extend this pole, which I don't really wanna do because it's already kind of a little wobbly guy, or I can just chop it since it's rooted, as you guys can see, and then I'll just get it back down on a pole, but I guess it could be worse. <laughs> Oh, this one's gonna be a painful one. Okay, so the next one is my, let's get over. My Anthurium roquianum. Back in October, it was a three leafer. One of the leaves sort of had a fungally looking thing. Oh my gosh, I do not miss having those kinds of blemishes on my Anthuriums from when I was growing them in greenhouses. Actually, two leaves looked like it had a fungally thing. And then the third leaf that was the newest leaf that just came out um, looks, pretty pristine but that one got a fungal thing shortly after so it is large and it is beautiful but it um yeah it let's just a spoiler it got overtaken by a fungal thing that I could not resolve not even with Phyton 35 so here is the queen now it's really just down to a stump and I'm I don't really even I don't even really care that much anymore to be honest over the over the last year I've sort of fallen out of love with this plant I don't love it the way that I used to mostly because it's kind of been like a nightmare with importing them like I've already lost so many in imports and then even the ones that I did have this was when I was growing them in greenhouses they just all had like a fungal thing um and granted i'm not growing greenhouse i'm not growing anthuriums in greenhouses anymore but i sort of still have that mentality of like my queen is gonna get um, a fungal thing but yeah i'm just not really <laughs> pressed about having a queen i don't really i don't know it's it's not one of those plants where i'm like i'm just gonna i'm gonna put this down because it's not really much to look at uh, it's not one of those plants where, like I'm looking at my prop right now and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm so determined to get it nice and big. I just, I don't know, it's like if it grows, it grows, if it doesn't, it doesn't. And since then there are so many other anthuriums that I've enjoyed so much more and other like similar anthuriums that I actually like a lot more, like the uh, Roquianum Waterberryanum hybrid or the Roquianum Esmeralda or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of in a way like burnt out from queens and I've just accepted that there are some anthuriums that really just don't like me or that I'm just not able to grow and I'm okay with that. So I don't know, even if I got to a point where like I didn't have a queen anymore, I don't really think I would care. I feel like I see them already so much on social media that I'm sort of just over it, if that makes any sense. And to be honest, I'm kind of thinking of just bringing this prop to California and either selling it or just giving it to my sister. I did have a good run with my original queen. She got so big. I think her biggest leaf was probably around this big. Like it almost barely fit in my EXO. Like it almost didn't fit in my EXO anymore. That's 36 inches tall. We had our time together, I got to soak her all in, I got to enjoy growing a nice big healthy one before she took a crap and I don't know, I feel sort of satisfied in that way, like I got to experience it and it was great but I've just got so many other plants in my collection that I enjoy so much more that I would rather put the energy toward so yeah. Anyway, this is what the queen looks like now, she's not much, she's just a little prop and I actually have like three more props from that plant because it was kind of a big stem and they're all popping leaves I only just grabbed one of them um, the other leaves are I think the other prop in my prop bin is a little bit bigger than this and it has two leaves 
but again not really sure what's going to happen with them i'm not even sure if i want to keep it but here's the update if you're wondering next one up oh my hoya colistophila in october it was a five leaf five leafer oh man it looks so much darker it's got that long runner it was in a really small no drainage pot it looks better it looks better in october so here's what it looks like now um it doesn't look terrible but the leaves have lightened up uh there are certain hoyas that you can put under a grow light and it'll sun stress and it'll look really nice and then there are some hoyas where it just kind of bleaches it i don't know which is which i just kind of stick everything where they fit um, but I did have this one sort of elevated on a tall like riser and it was like right underneath the grow light and it just like really Washed out these leaves like they're so bleached and it doesn't look super bleached But when you compare it to what it looked like before it was so dark green. It was like just really ugh, like vibrant It was just it was beautiful, but now it's like this sort of light green color which doesn't look bad but I just wish I hadn't put it so close to the grow light. So all of the leaves from October are still on it. These four, this one, and then this is the only new leaf since then. This one definitely just does not like to grow for me. And I don't know, it's just really slow. I don't know if having mealybugs has anything to do with anything, but I did have sort of a bad mealybug outbreak in my Redsta, which I think it's about like 90% resolved. I haven't seen one in a while, but I say 90 because I know that there's more. I just know it. So this was one that definitely got mealybugs, and I feel like I see another one right here. Or maybe that's perlite. How come I can't how come I can't zoom in with my eyes? Let's see. I took a picture of it. What does that look like to you? That looks like a mealybug to me. Well, I don't know. This probably has mealybugs, but yeah, I don't know. This one is a slow grower. It's still one of my favorites though. Um, this is the Hoya that really got me into like the reptilian looking Hoyas and ones that look like really dumpstery and gross. Cause I, before I really only used to like the round Hoyas, the fuzzy Hoyas, like the nickel shaped Hoyas, but I am definitely into like the reptile Hoyas now. and I. I think that this was my gateway Hoya into that world of ancient dumpster Hoyas. So again, not much to report. She's alive, she's well, she's been repotted and um, she's in a much bigger vessel now. I got her onto one of the beautiful Architrellises that I got from Propagation Diaries, which I will link in the description. You guys, I love these trellises so much. I've, ha I've been using them for over, God, I can't remember. There's, I have no sense of time anymore, but they have been in some of my older videos and I did an unboxing and I showed you guys the install of them on some of my plants. I think I did this one on camera as well, but I just really love them. I, They're so beautiful. Um, this is one of like the smoky gray color, uh, but my favorite ones are the clear ones where you cannot see anything, I think. Oh, I've got my Hoya Avobada on one. Okay, it, this is not about the Architrellis, but uh, since this is like kind of a favorites video, if I had to include a favorite in this video, I know it's an update video, but if I had to include it, I would 100% put this like number one on the list. I love them so much. So anyway, Hoya Callistophila, alive and kicking, but seemingly stuck in time and possibly has mealybugs. Okay, so the next plant on this list is the Syngonium Pink Splash. I don't have that one anymore. It is with my mom, and I think she gave some to my grandma. So it's, I mean, I think, I don't think it died. I have. I don't really keep tabs on my mom's plants, but um, in any case, I did give that one to my mom. And then there is, I might as well just get it out of the way now. There, at the very end, I showed a Syngonium Wenlandii. I, I don't have that one anymore either. I think, I can't remember if I gave that one to my mom or if I sold it or if I just gave it away. I just kind of fell out of love with it. It was growing so fast. It was growing so unruly. It just outgrew the shelf and... It was during one of those times where I was like, there's too many plants and I really need to figure out who I love and who I don't love. So that one did not make the cut of the love list and no, I don't know how it happened, but it is not with me anymore. 
So anyway, besides those two, um, the next one is the Begonia Sinbad. Let's see. Freaking ads. Oh, it was so cute. Okay, so it was a little, oh my gosh, I'm so itchy. It was in, oh my gosh, it was in one of my drinking glasses. It looks like it was still a propagation back then. Wow, it's come a long way since then. But it was, it was really small. So I'm going to uh, also insert a clip from my Instagram of uh, what it looked like kind of over time from October up until now. It was huge. Like it outgrew my shelf at one point. It was probably like, can't even fit in the frame. It was probably like this tall. The leaves were like this big. They were so big and it's probably my favorite begonia, I think. But at one point it was just too big. All of the auxiliary buds were just exploding and it went from being a two stem um, Sinbad to like a six stem Sinbad and it was just growing 360. It was leaning this way. It was leaning that way. It was just, it was everywhere and I got really overwhelmed and I just chopped it up. So I gave one cutting or two cuttings to my mom. Um, I gave a really big cutting to my neighbor upstairs. I gave another cutting to Lauren at North Shore. I chopped that thing into like a million pieces because I kind of stopped enjoying it once it turned into this massive thing. I was kind of just getting really overwhelmed. So I don't feel guilty in that sense that I chopped it away because I was able to give a lot of um, you know, cuttings to friends, but I am left with a much more manageable plant now. So let me show you kind of the main plant that I have left. Oh my God, these leggings are so itchy. They're like the fleece lined ones and oh gosh. So here's the main plant. You can see some of the leaves are kind of starting to go out. I had this one in a really bright windowsill. Did not like that. So I pulled it back. Now it's just kind of living on this shelf. But um, yeah, you can see like the leaves. They they were like they were like all this big, and it's like bigger than my hand. So imagine this times like 30 leaves. I was like, nope, I can't. I can't do it anymore. It's way too big. So I just chopped it. I chopped it all up. I still have a base somewhere, and the base is like it's chopped down. But there's like 17 freaking begonia growth points with these little tiny leaves coming out of it so that's going to turn into its own thing later down the line but i just needed a more manageable size and i actually enjoy the sinbad more when it's a smaller plant and i can just enjoy each of the leaves and it's kind of got this cute sort of cascading growth pattern with the other begonia i just didn't like how like one growth point was going that way the other growth point was going that way all the leaves were facing every which way and it it really just overwhelms me so this was another one of the cuttings that came off of it and this one was like going this way and that one was going this way so i'm just really trying to paint the picture here of how overwhelmed i was with this plant but um i do have the, i just took this cutting this morning because this particular one that was attached to another plant because I ended up with like four different plants. This one was sitting right in my east facing window and oh my gosh, the leaves that were facing the window, they're all just like this bright pink color. I wonder if I have the base somewhere. I don't remember where I put it, but yeah, I just, it's in pieces now. And as I don't know, some people are, pro are probably gonna be like, why did you do that? But I'm the one that has to take care of it, so I just need something more manageable. And I kind of wish that this could just be frozen in time forever and just stay like this and never grow and never die. The end. Here's another thing that I am not really enjoying about begonia life. Um, my hair. These flowers, so pretty, so beautiful, so dainty, right? Incredible, amazing. They're everywhere. Oh my gosh, they're all over my floors. There's, it flowers all the freaking time and it's just everywhere. Like my, my Tamaya on the windowsill, there are flowers everywhere, like dead flowers that have dropped. And these are so delicate. Like once they dry up, it's like you could just, and just, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm sort of like 
on the fence of whether um, I want to try and grow another big begonia again or if I'm going to be one of those begonia sinbad owners that is just always chopping down the plant and just kind of pruning it and keeping it at a maintainable level but yeah I zero regrets about sharing the plant it is one of my favorites I feel like everybody should have a begonia sinbad to enjoy in their collection so as long as I can keep these cuttings happy I'm gonna have a lot of begonia sinbad to spread around town so yeah that is the begonia sinbad the next one on the list is the hoya manipurensis oh it was so happy back then how times have changed so this would have been probably not long after i received it from my friend nikki it looked like it kind of still has all of the original leaves on it i think i probably should have watched this video before i filmed this but I really don't do much planning on this on this channel. I kind of just think of something and then I turn the camera on and then we start. But <laughs> yeah, so you can see it's got like two, four, six, eight, I don't know, ten leaves or something. It's in a little two-inch pot in soil and looks pretty happy. Listen. I'm not a I'm not a Hoya person. I really would not consider myself a Hoya person. I do know that I have an entire cabinet filled with Hoyas, but I don't think that cons it, I don't think that makes me a Hoya person. I feel like I'm like a fake Hoya person right now because I don't even know the names of half more than half of the Hoyas I have in my collection. I don't really know much about them in terms of like where they grow natively. I don't do a ton of research on them. I just like some Hoyas and I like to have them and show them on this channel occasionally. So this is what is left of the Hoya Manipurensis and my friend Nikki did warn me that this one is kind of a finicky one. She was like, if it dies, tell me and I'll give you another cutting. But um, surprisingly, I have not managed to kill this one down to a stump. There's always been leaves on it from what I can remember and this is just one of those Hoyas that I cannot touch because after I got it out of soil in that two inch pot it just threw an absolute tantrum I think it was probably down to a single leaf down at the very or up at the very top and the roots had rotted so I had to get it into perlite and I just it was like a whole maybe like five months of rehabbing and I just finally got it into pawn and it seems to have stabilized but this has just been kind of stuck in time which I'm not mad about. I don't care that it's not growing because I'm happy that it's just not dying and these three leaves have been on it for quite some time now. So this is a plant where I just kind of take a peek in here. If I see it's like bone dry, I'll add a little bit. I'll add maybe just up to like right here and then I freaking leave it. I don't touch it. I don't. I spray it sometimes with the um, Miracle Grow Orchid Spray. But other than that, this one is never, ever, ever going to get a repot. Ever. Not even if it begs me. I'm just not going to touch it. So, by the way, this is not a mealy bug. That is some sap from. Oh, there it is. It's just like dried up sap. Uh, this one did have mealy bugs though. I think that pretty much all of my Hoyas had mealy bugs at some point. That was probably my least favorite outbreak. It was somehow even more stressful than the Thrips outbreak that I had in the apartment. Mealy bugs, we're just not, we don't jive. Don't like them, don't like them, hate them. For the finale, the last one that I'm going to show you guys is the Philodendron SP Columbia. This is my original. SP Columbia that I got from Lauren at North Shore and it looks like in this video it had three leaves it was in a oh it was in moss still uh, from North Shore so it was basically exactly in the condition that I got it from from her um, in October I grew my first leaf in my care or grew the first leaf in my care it was so cute i can't remember what the growing conditions were for this plant uh back then i think i would have just had it like in an xo or something but uh yeah we've just i've learned a lot about that plant since then but she's still with us and i will bring her up now here is big mama sp columbia now 
Um, she, I mean, she's alive and kicking. I don't find this one to be a very, very hard plant to care for, to be honest. I included this in my easiest philodendrons video from, what was it, July or June or something. I will say the only sort of issue that I've had with this plant is light which is why I have moved it out of a greenhouse. I actually even moved it out of my plant room. It's living here on top of my Rudsta now. So we're still acclimatizing out to basically lower temperatures and less light. Um, but this is the newest leaf on it and you can kind of see it was really, really close to a grow light. Oh my gosh, this train is angry. Uh, you can see how like yellow and bleached it got and it was under a 20 we get it it was under a 24 watt grow light which are you done okay so yeah big mistake getting it under a 24 watt light because this even burned under a 10 watt light and you can see some of the burn from a freaking 10 watt light so i was like you know what if if you hate light that much, oh my gosh. Okay, well, I don't know if it's stopped yet, but um, yeah, this thing just <laughs> hates light. Uh, I do see some people growing this in like bright greenhouses, like bright tents, and it has no burn. So I don't know what that's all about, but literally the second that I get this under any kind of artificial light, it's like, nope. And it just turns this bright yellow. So uh, I've got a new leaf on the way right here. Oh my gosh, this sheath, how embarrassing. Pretend you didn't see that. Oh, crunchy. Oh, it's so bright pink. Look at that little rocket. Gosh, look how bright red and cute that is. Okay, so a new leaf is on the way. So I'm curious to see how dark or what the leaf looks like once it comes out because there is no freaking way it should get burned all the way back here. It is all the way across the apartment from my windows and there is no kind of grow lights over there. So yeah, like if this thing still comes out yellow, then I'm gonna have to reassess everything I know about this plant and figure out why it's turning yellow because um, my understanding is that all the times that it's kind of did this with the just, yeah, you can see kind of that tinge of yellow around the edges. It's always been so close to a grow light. We'll see when this guy comes out and I'm just gonna observe and kind of see if it bleaches or if it, I don't know, because maybe the yellowing isn't from bleaching. Maybe it's a nutrient deficiency or something. Don't tell me it's from no drainage holes because this baby's grown with drainage, okay? And don't roast me on how small this vessel is. I know, I know. But it's not super root bound, to be honest. I can still see a lot of soil in here. It's not like the entire vessel is overtaken with roots, but it is probably ready for a repot uh, soon. I'm just, I don't know. I don't really like to baby my plants so much to the point where it's like the second there's a lot of roots in it. I'm like, oh, it needs a new pot. I'm like, you can, you can do, I wear tight pants. You can wear tight pants too. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at with this one. Um, good sized leaf. I love it so much. I've acquired a few other Philodendron SP Columbia since then, but this has definitely been one of my favorite plants of the year. I think kind of a lot of people are on that same boat with the hype of these plants. And as much as I kind of hate to contribute to that hype of people wanting certain trendy plants, you just really can't deny like how freaking beautiful this is. And just, it's so stunning. Like the glossy leaves, the really, dark sunken in venation the leaf shape of these like they're just everything i just i love this plant so much so yeah we've come a long way since then this one is on a lazy pole even though it is starting to crawl now this um is definitely coming out at an angle i feel i think maybe 
but it's been honestly a very very low maintenance plant for me um does not push out a ton of efn so i'm not dealing with like those spotty things on the leaves this one did have spider mites uh no thrips but yeah it did have spider mites but kind of resolved pretty fast after i got um predatory mites on it but this one has just been so good to me and if you're trying to avoid the SP Columbia or SP Silver, whatever you want to call it, um, because you don't want to be sucked into a trendy plant, you're missing out. So that's it for the October favorites. Um, I don't know if I managed to hit my goal of 30 minutes and under. I am not checking my watch. I am checking for dry skin on my palm, on my hand. But um, yeah, I just wanted to just kind of give you guys a check-in and see where we're at now the only one that i have left to do in terms of updates are the december favorites updates and then once i do that one then we'll get restarted over with a new favorites video maybe starting in january but yeah anyway hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys liked it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps pudge and i a lot on youtube Thank you guys if you've been here from the beginning or if you're a new subscriber, hello and welcome to the circus. Thank you for watching yet another upload and I will see you in the next one.